Thank you, Al, for calling us back into open session. I recommend that minutes related to the privacy of students and their records remain sealed. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining? Abstaining. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. I recommend that minutes pertaining to potential litigation, civil action versus Kenvo Floor Company, remain sealed. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining? Thank you. One abstention. Good. Yes, sir. I recommend that minutes pertaining to collective bargaining, NEA ESP contract negotiations, remain sealed until, until such time as an agreement has been reached. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining? Thank you. <clears throat> brings us to disclosure of executive session votes. Since we had eight votes in executive session. The first vote was rescinding a home instruction request. It was eight in favor, zero opposed, two abstentions, zero recusals. In favor, Abbott, Callahan, Chambers, Day, Dimo, Juicy, Guzan, Macaruso. Abstaining was Lyall. Johnson. And Johnson, sorry. <laughs> Vote number two, home instruction, home instruction request. Ten in favor, zero opposed, zero abstentions, zero accusals. In favor, Abbott, Callahan, Chambers, Day, Dimoff, Juicy, Johnson, Luzon, Lyall, Macarusto. Third vote, home, home instruction request. Ten in favor, zero opposed, zero abstentions, zero accusals. In favor, Abbott, Callahan, Chambers, Day, Dimoff, Juicy, Johnson, Luzon, Lyall, Macarusso. Fourth vote, executive session minutes of September 10th, 2019, approval and rescinding of home instruction request. Seven in favor, zero opposed, three abstentions, zero recusals. In favor, Callahan, Day, Dimoff, Juicy, Johnson, Luzon, Macaruso. Abstaining, Abbott, Lyall, and Chambers. Vote number five, executive session minutes of September 10th, 2019, collective bargaining. Seven in favor, zero opposed, three and three abstentions, zero recusals. In favor, Callahan, Day, Dimoff, Juicy, Johnson, Luzon, Macaruso, abstaining, Abbott, Chambers, and Lyall. Six vote, uh, approval to pursue civil action. Ten in favor, zero opposed, zero abstentions, zero recusals. In favor, Abbott, Callahan, Chambers, Day, Dip. Dimoff, Juicy, Johnson, Luzon, Lyall, Macaruso. Seventh vote, NEA, ESP negotiations. Eight in favor, zero opposed, two abstentions, zero recusals. In favor, Callahan, Chambers, Day, Dimoff, Juicy, Johnson, Lyall, Macaruso. Abstaining, Abbott, and Luzon. Vote number eight was to come out, visit with you folks. Uh, return to regular session. Ten in favor, zero opposed, zero abstentions, zero recusals. In favor, Abbott, Callahan, Chambers, Day, Dimoff, Houston, Johnson, Luzon, Lyall, Macaruso. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, sir. Please join me in congratulating Barbara Browning, who was selected as an employee of the month, and Deb Zonfrilly, who was selected as an employee of the month. Also, Grade 12 student Simon Manlove, who's a National Merit Scholarship semifinalist, which means that he's in the top 16,000 students in the country. And Claire Nez, who's a National Merit Scholarship commended, so she's in the top 50,000 students in the country. And to middle school's teacher Brian Lucas, who was named the 2019 Rhode Island Computer Science Education Leader. That brings us to public forum. Is there any member in the audience tonight that would like to speak? No? This brings us to policy. So you have in your packet revisions to the service animals in school 
in that school events policy, given your discussion at the last meeting. I hope you find it acceptable. I recommend approval. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve or to adopt the service animal and school policy. Discussion. Those in, oh. Just, just one comment. Yes, I think, I think the, uh, the discussion uh, and the notes that we uh, had last time were well addressed in the revised policy, so I have no problem voting for it. Thanks, Mary. Yeah. Any further comments? Those in favor of adopting the policy? It's unanimous. Thank you. Business. So the first item under business is culinary arts curriculum. So the recommendation is that you approve. Culinary arts does not have a statewide curriculum. So we are in the process of looking at our curricula at the Korean Tech Center and, and lo making local changes where there's no statewide uh, or national curriculum. So this is the first of a few that you'll see in the coming months. Okay. And your so recommend move. recommendation is to approve. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second to approve the culinary arts curriculum. Any discussion? Um, Donna. I just had a, a quick question, and I think either Jane, did you work on this, or was it Jerry? Did you work on this? We, Jane, could I? Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, uh, sorry. We, we both did, and um, Mr. Off did come, Director Off did come this evening in case there were any questions. Okay. That well, Mike, it's a quick question. If they don't pass the Serve Safe assessment certification, do we still grant them? Is that conditional? Is this curriculum conditional on them passing that national Serve Safe assessment? Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> So each student in the program has the opportunity to um, test for one of the industry certifications. Ideally, you know, our goal is 100% attainment of those certifications. From time to time, it does happen that a student does not pass the certification. Uh, we try to budget appropriately, so we have um, extra funds available for a student to take a retake, but it is okay. a cost every time they take it. Um, but unfortunately, sometimes we do graduate kids that are unable to um, obtain a certification in any one of our programs, it's a very small percentage. Okay. They still earn a Cheriho uh, diploma. Um, they can still receive a passing grade for the course and earn credit towards their graduation. So looking over this curriculum and considering the industry certification that they're leaving us with, mm -hmm. this is really good because they could move right into employment. They can, I and that's, think. a lot of work has been done at the state level in all of our programs to work with business partners to see what those credentials are for entry level employment, and these certifications were identified as certifications that can get you uh, hired upon graduation. That's so, great. That's good job. Work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion or questions for Director Roth? No? Those in favor of adopting the culinary arts curriculum? It's unanimous. Thank you all. Thank you. I recommend creation of a school facility subcommittee that would be charged with developing a deep knowledge of current school construction and financial incentives with a focus on newer and fewer, and that the subcommittee be charged with seeking input from various constituency groups, and that the subcommittee, subcommittee make a full and complete recommendation to the school committee by, by May 1, 2020, including operational impact upon which future action may be based. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second for the creation of a school uh, facility subcommittee. Any discussion? Lisa. Um, Chair, what is the um, makeup of the committee going to be, the subcommittee, in terms of membership? 
Uh, it hasn't been established yet. I, ideally, we have at least one representative from each township, um, but we can't have more than six total. You can't have more than I don't one. think so, because that puts us at seven, or, right? That would be a quorum for the committee itself. Okay. Are you um, inviting members of the town councils or any of the constituency groups as well? Or just at this point, school committee membership? School committee membership. Okay. So um, on that note, I want to just point out, and I had shared some um, information with Chair um, Callahan this morning as well, that there has been some concern amongst um, our staff, um, and so information needs to be disseminated, disseminated as we always do, um, as transparently as possible, because there's a lot of concern and anxiety, um, understandably so. And so I just want to point out that in the charge you've proposed, um, number two, that although there will not necessarily be a formal appointment of anyone outside of the school committee, um, that the subcommittee is charged with seeking input from various constituency groups. And so I just want to highlight that um, for the public and for the staff that are feeling um, anxious that they will be included in the process. Excellent point. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Those in favor? <coughs> Opposed? Abstaining? Thanks, George. Yeah. Um, at this point, I would like to create the subcommittee. And uh, I'll point those to it. Chair, uh, yes, sir. Uh, just to let you know, at the end of the meeting, for a future request, I was going to be requesting who uh, volunteer or appointment to replace Steve Cusick's positions. Uh, uh, so I don't know if this is worthy where we can do that, but I am going to be requesting that. Okay. So it's I'm just throwing that out there for you. Yeah, I think that would that's a bit Similar. more about housekeeping. Um, not house, well, yeah, but I think that we could keep this separate since this okay. is fresh in, in front of folks. I, I would like to create this subcommittee um, for those who want to participate in it and, and then get it going. So in terms of participation in the subcommittee, um, I'd like to chair it, uh, if that's okay with the school committee. Um, but um, I'm open to um, not if there's strong Catherine. I nominate Ryan Callahan to chair the this subcommittee. Yeah. Second. second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to appoint me as chair of the subcommittee. Any discussion? Lisa. Um, so I support that. For the Rye School Task Force. The procedure was to establish the subcommittee and, and then allow the subcommittee to choose the chair. Mm. So I think for consistency of practice, we ought to nominate you as the Richmond representative and then allow the subcommittee to then nominate you as chair. I totally agree with that. I totally forgot about that. Thank you. I rescind my motion. <laughs> I restate my motion to nominate you to be on the committee. Thank you. As, as a representative, as I second that as a representative of Richmond. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion on that? Uh, those in favor? I'm in favor too. Thank you. It's unanimous. Uh, who else would like to be on the subcommittee? Mr. Luzon. I nominate Craig Luzon as the Charleston representative to the um, Schools Facilities Subcommittee. Second. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Abstaining. Who else would like to participate? Catherine. I nominate Catherine Juicy as a representative of Hopkinton to be on the subcommittee. Second. second. Okay. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Abstaining. Anyone else want to participate on this subcommittee? We have a representative from each town. 
Oh, here we do. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> You're from Trump. I forget where you live. Okay. Um, if there's no one else who wants to participate in the subcommittee, I think we. Oh. Bill, are you interested? No. Oh, you're talking to him? Yeah. Not at the present time. I've got a few things going on here right now. Okay. You're so knowledgeable. Okay. Um, in that case, our subcommittee is created, and I don't think any further action is needed at this time for it. If that changes, we'll take it up again. Thank you all. Thank you. That brings us to the evaluation. Right? So, uh, Donna, this is your item. Do you yes. want to, Do you want to introduce it? Yes, I do. Um, I originally asked for evaluation. This says evaluation instruments, and I'm more concerned about procedures for staff. And I appreciate that you um, tabled it from the last meeting since I was not able to attend. But um, I reviewed quickly the extensive documents that were given from the state for the various positions. And it's great that we have those guidelines. The reason why I introduced this, uh, I wanted to discuss this topic, though, was more related to our own procedures here in Chaho. Um, twice within the last six months, I found myself involved in a hearing <coughs> on appeal where the process of the evaluation really caused a problem with the person, the staff member, <coughs> that were appealing the recommendation. I think you um, all, we were all involved in that second one. And what I found in the time that I um, was involved in this particular hearing with Kristen, to listen to an appeal of a staff member, um, the person that was doing the evaluation, who was a supervisor, because I see from this document that it can, that we can choose who does the evaluation. But the person that did the evaluation, to, to my um, surprise, had not used the <coughs> group that was, that was involved. And that caused serious problems. The rubric was the rubric for the teachers. Uh, actually, this was support staff was not used when the evaluator did the evaluation, and so there was a lot of confusion around the evaluation. As we all know, the rubric, especially those in these documents, and I'm assuming these are the ones we use, um, were um, are available to be the transparency of what if I'm a staff member how what do I what is expected of me and how can I know when I'm performing this job and what at what level and if that's presented to the person on an ongoing basis then they know what evidence they have to produce to be evaluated so does that all make sense? Anyway, it was it, it caused may, it caused considerable problems. Um, we are aware recently of the person that got a glowing recommendation and then had problems with the um, with the renewal of of the contract. Um, I think we need to review our policy. I, I think I would like to be on a committee to look at what our procedures are. How do we, how do we select? the person doing the evaluation, what process is done to the staff member. I'm assuming, Jane, that you are responsible for this in some way? Not really. Um, no, okay, okay. Um, but okay, then it's the building administrators then that, that <laughs> select who does the evaluation of the staff, um, who evaluates them and at what, at what time frame and I think at the beginning of the year there's one evaluation and then it's it's reviewed again. But do the staff members have that rubric and do the person does the person doing the evaluation have the rubric? And do they match up that rubric with the evidence that's being presented? And if it's not, what is the communication process? So it's it's kind of getting into the weeds of what we do here in Cherahoe to evaluate our staff, but I don't want the evaluation process to be 
a hindrance for um, communicating good or bad performance among the staff. It needs to be augmenting the communication with the staff. Mm -hmm. Does that? OK, so no, I would I'll like to. I'll let you finish, because you want to respond. OK, I want you to. You want to respond. I do. Yes. OK. And I'm just <coughs> suggesting that with these instruments that we look at the process in a clearer light that we do here in Cheddar Hope with each administrator. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So on our website under um, evaluation, there's a document, a two-page document that outlines the process. Okay. And I'll, sh I'll show it to you okay. before you before we leave. I would say to you that no employee is evaluated without being trained in how to use the instrument. With what, I'm sorry? No employee is evaluated without being trained in terms of how the instrument is to be used. Sometimes things occur after an evaluation is completed. Yes. In, that, in one of the situations you're raising, that's what happened. Okay, I understand that. Right, yeah. I can't control timing. Yeah. Um, but what I think does need improvement, and we've already taken some steps, is when someone is, someone is duly supervised, mm -hmm. there's not always the kind of collaboration on the evaluation that I think mm -hmm. there should be. So Kristen, oh, she left already. She's not here, she left here. Yeah. I know. I think she did that on purpose, no. <laughs> I think she might have, because so she knew it's, yeah. Everything is uh, in, a, in a software package. Okay. And we're trying to get the software package maker to require two signatures okay. before it will be finalized when there's dual supervision. That's the area I think needs the greatest amount of attention. Okay. But, I, but there's no way to control timing when something happens after the completion. And, and that could be the case in one of these situations, but the person, the administrator that was doing the evaluation said that they did that she did not use the rubric at all. So, so there was, she just Shame on that person. Uh, shame on her. Who's right. no longer working here. Right. Correct. And we have that appeals process built into our, our procedures for that very reason. It's a kind of like a safety net. So to be used when people make mistakes and errors in judgment. Mm -hmm. That's exactly why we have it. So mm -hmm. while I understand your frustration, it actually mm -hmm. worked. Okay. Well, I would accept that, but when this happened the first time, Kristen was involved and I said, this needs to be reviewed. So she may have taken it back and said, yeah, let's look at it. I think the two signatures is a really good idea. That's what we're trying uh, to get them to change. Evaluation. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that only works when two people are right. evaluating. Two signatures when they're not both evaluating right. is almost as bad as what you described. Right. But I'm glad the process worked because you corrected an error. It sounds like. I did. It did. And, and the person was honest enough to, yeah, so that's, to that's say a, I, I screwed up. That's a good thing because people, yeah, huh? people do make mistakes. People do make mistakes. And uh, we have a safety net to uh, deal with that. Good. Okay. Uh, I'm satisfied with what you're saying. I just wanted to be clear as to not getting tripped up in the process. I can't promise there will never be another error made. Yes. But I'm glad the safety net worked. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Now, well, I will show you that other spot where that cut those guidelines are. Yeah, is it under resources? It's under evaluation. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I recommend approval of my goals, which again, I tried to capture some of your comments from last time in these. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second for the approval of the superintendent's goals. Discussion? Lisa. So I would like to highlight um, one seven under your goals, Mr. Ritchie, 
um, where you note that you want to provide targeted support uh, for trauma-impacted students and for other students who may otherwise be impacted. Um, I appreciate that this has been included. This is a critical group of students. It's a complex group of students, and unfortunately, it's a growing number of students. Um, so I would just like to go on record and state that um, come budget proposals, I would welcome um, proposals from the administration to make sure that Terre Haute is properly staffed in order to address the mental health needs and concerns um, of the students. <coughs> so in order for this to work, there has to be an adequate number of mental health providers in the, and on campus. If I may add to that, the right with the right qualifications? H highly qualified, yes, or specialized. Okay, better word. Yes, specialized. Um, so I'll be looking for that, and thank you for that. Thank you. Any further discussion on the superintendent's goals? Yes, sir. On three, uh, the last one, uh, investigate the establishment of an ROTC, or hmm. similar program for high school, as well as a veteran. Thank you very much. Um, there are police cadets also, and we do have a program that would kind of really work well with that. So just feel free to send it my way. Hmm? Feel free to send it my way. Okay. Further discussion? All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the superintendent's goals. Those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. That brings us to consent agenda items. I would like, I, I know some of you missed, so I'm assuming A1 and 2 are pulled. I would like to pull F1 as well. Does anybody have anything else that they would like to pull? Yes, ma'am. Just F in general, so prior to F1. So F1, F2. Um, no, it, it's it's just F. It's a lack of notation. So F. Okay. All of them. So, yeah. um, so I guess that means that we would then be voting on all seven independently. Nope, that's not my intention. Okay. Um, never mind. I'll do it off. I'll do it after meeting. Okay. I rescind. Understood. Chair, I make a motion to move the remainder. Second. Motion and a second to move the remainder of the consent agenda items. Those in favor? It's unanimous. Linda, Linda, the first two you want to abstain from. Okay, right. First two. First two. Chair, make a motion to uh, move. A1, Executive Session Minutes of September 10th, 2019. Second. Motion and a second to approve the Executive Session Minutes September 10th, 2019. Discussion? Those in favor? Thank you. Abstaining? I was not here. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. That's Chair, make a motion to Approve a two regular session minutes of September 10th, 2019. Second. Motion and second to approve the regular session minutes September 10th, 2019. Discussion? Those in favor? Abstaining? Okay. Same as last week. Okay. Chair? Yes, sir. With extreme reluctance. I make a motion to approve F1. So we still have a second. We have a motion and a second. So why don't you to read everyone knows? Oh, I, 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 it was recommend I read this. Recommend the acceptance of the resignation request for the purpose of retirement of Susan Rogers for the position from the position of Director of Administration and Finance, effective March 31st. 2020 contingent upon the confirmation of eligibility from the state retirement the state retirement board. We're not second. 
Do it. We have a second. Hey, I want to get rid of her 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Day is seconded that. All right, that we have a motion and a second to accept the resignation. Let's do Rogers. Discussion. Are you sure? <laughs> She's not sure. <laughs> Mr. Ritchie says that we can this is a uh, very. I'd like to acknowledge, yes. please. Yes. I know. I could do that. They haven't approved. But she, I think she yeah. just called me a jerk. <laughs> but you still have six more months. Yeah. <laughs> Donna. You're still good until you sign the I just wanted to say, Sue, that when Brian Stanley fell ill, you did a phenomenal job of stepping right up to the plate even before you got this position. So thank you for all your wonderful service to this district. Thank you. <clears throat> Further discussion? Those in favor. Opposed? <laughs> Sym symbolically, because nobody on this committee wants you to re resign. So that's for that. Did Bill vote? No. Abstaining. No, I, I voted, like I said, 20 years ago. Was my idea. <laughs> oh, so you voted he was in favor. favor of it? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, report, sir. So the good news, as of today, as of tonight, based on your action, I believe we are fully staffed, which was a little bit of a challenge, um, but we were there. Um, there was some discussion at a Richmond Town Council meeting about your responsibility to maintain the fields at Richmond School. I believe it is our responsibility to do that. I reviewed the lease. and. Um, you actually budgeted, I don't know if you remember this or not, you budgeted a small amount to have a plan developed for that property. And, and we can seek some funding once the plan is done. So we're working on getting that moving. But I don't think there's any dispute about our responsibility. And that's all I have. Coming event, 925 Hope Valley Open House. 925 Richmond School PTO, 926 Middle School Open House, 101 Charlestown PTO and Ashaway PTO, 102 Middle School Improvement Team, 102 Ashaway Open House, 103 Hope Valley Flu Clinic, Flu Clinic Cala Open House, 103 High School Korean Tech Open House. 10-4, secondary prog progress reports, 10-4, Richmond School Picture Day, and 10-7, Ashaway School Picture Day, 10-8, Richmond School Improvement Team, and 10-8, Charlestown School Flu Clinic. Thank you. Uh, school committee requests for future agenda items. Mr. Luzon, you had one. Uh, the sub populating the subcommittees with the appropriate Number of people? Yep. Replacement of. Is it just replacement of one person, or do you want me to put them all on? Um, or do you want to look I'm at it? I'm not going to predict whether some people like to move, or I don't know. But. It might be nice to see if anybody wants to. So, yeah. uh, assignment to subcommittee. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mr. Jay. Oh, I'm sorry. I finished. Finished. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's not hey, a request. You're, you're, you're from Charleston. The Charleston begins with a C, so go ahead. You're not. Not a request. Oh, uh, very concerned about <coughs> the child safety on these school buses. I, I would like to have us uh, investigate the feasibility and expense of putting cameras on the buses so we can uh, identify drivers that are continually run red lights on buses, and if it's 
if the police department will be able to enforce this with the, with cameras. I know that you, you know, mean outside exterior? outside cameras, so that we could we could we could we could uh, you know get a license plate <laughs> of a, a car yeah. passing a bus, and mm. if the police department will be able to enforce it without. Uh, the person driving the bus being responsible to appear in court because I've heard some some scuttlebutt that people have uh, been uh, forced to go to court and judges have been throwing stuff like that out. That's just what I've heard. Okay. You want to you want us to check into it or you want an agenda item? Well, I, I I I think if it's if it's something that is going to be Require an some expense and stuff like that, that we would need to uh, okay. To, and it doesn't have to be next month if, if it's going to be tight. But you know, I, I'd like to like to be able to hit the ground running if, if it's feasible because so it's, given it's the an nature issue given the nature of it, I think a vote from the committee would be good. So I'll, let me let us do a little checking first about what's feasible. It's a big issue out there, Barry. I, I agree. Okay, Lisa. So um, I, I support Bill's um, his recommendation, um, but I would not want to limit it to exterior cameras if we're going to start this conversation. Um, and in support of one or several of your goals, we should also consider putting cameras that are inward facing on the bus as well, because there are as many incidents that are occurring within the bus that are impacting our students as there are, that there may be safety concerns outside. Um, bus drivers have the responsibility to maintain the law in terms of driving, as Bill has noted, but there's also supervi um, supervisory issues that are happening on the bus as well. So I don't want this limited to exter exterior cameras only. If we're gonna do it, I wanna look at it fully. Right, we have interior cameras, but we can combine them. Okay. Okay, Mr. Adams. Is there a practice as to how long a bus driver should engage a parent while the bus is stuck? I'm not sure what that means. It means there might be cars behind the bus oh. and they carry on seemingly long conversations. I know. No, there's no, there's no guidance. Mm -hmm. But they have a schedule. But they have a schedule to maintain. Okay. Is that something you want? Well, I don't know. It's, I know I find it frustrating when they're talking for maybe four or five minutes. I'm not saying they shouldn't talk, but maybe that feeds into some of these people running the lights. I, I think the issue is that there's a route that they're supposed to be following, and there's really not time to have a long conversation okay. to be able to follow that route. But we'll talk, we'll talk to the manager about it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any, yes, sir, Brad. <clears throat> so uh, I like the uh, suggestion, and I do know they have inter interior cameras uh, for about a year now, at least. Oh, <clears throat> So in terms of the future, so but yes. I would I would like to request that we hear a peer from John, from the lawyer of the district, whether this recording will be enforceable. So you have a policy already. Um, it's called videography and photography, and there is actually a section in there about cameras on the bus. So you you've already done that work, or laid the groundwork. No, I'm saying for the exterior recording, if we get a plate of a car, for example, is that something police can actually use? Well, that's part of what Bill asked for, so we'll check that out before yep. we put it on the agenda. Yep. Okay, so that's covered. Yeah. You're good. Okay. Any further requests for agenda items and or legal opinions? Going once, twice. Okay. Ready? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion, but before I do, I would like to welcome our newest member, Linda McAllister. Thank you. Don't get yes, used to these being over by <laughs> well, 741. It's better than they get used to it. Yeah. Uh, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. Those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you all. Thank you.